If you get this one thing right in Google Ads, then you will be completely off to the races, basically setting yourself up for success right from the jump in Google Ads. And the coolest part is that this doesn't matter if you're just spending your very first dollar in Google Ads today, or if you're already spending tens of thousands of dollars every single day. I've been running Google Ads for 11 years, and the concept that I'm gonna break down in this video has never been more important. Machine learning, algorithms, and AI have basically taken over Google Ads to the point where people don't even know what to do or how to properly feed those algorithms. So in this video, we're going to be going over the concept of signal density. Signal density is the most important thing that you need to follow and you need to do in order to successfully run your Google ads today in 2025 and well beyond. I believe this concept is so critical when running Google ads that I actually built an app that we're going to go over all together so that we could actually input specific values based on where the business is today to then determine what kind of campaign structure needs to be run, what settings need to be tweaked, what budget needs to be set. In Google Ads, there are so many different kinds of campaign types that you can run. You can run search campaigns, branded search, non-branded search, performance max. We're gonna be focusing on e-commerce specifically today. This video is for people who are trying to scale their e-commerce brands and put dollars in and dollars out. We wanna maximize return on ad spend. This is not a hack, this is not a quick fix. This is a long-term proven strategy that if you use over the course of three, six, nine, 12 months and beyond, you are going to see significantly increased increased results in your Google ads account. So pulling up the app that I built here, I'm going to walk you through this from start to finish. So you can see exactly how to use it and how this applies to your business. First off at the top, we have an input data section here. We're inputting the daily ad budget that we have set. This isn't necessarily what you've been spending. This is what you want to be spending. In this case, I'm going to keep this really simple. And I'm going to say $500. We next need to input our average order value. This should be from your Shopify store. In this case, I'm going to say our average order value is $100 just to keep this really, really, really simple. The next piece is our average cost per purchase. You should be getting this from your Google ads account. And if you don't have the Google ads account to get it from, then you should be getting it from your Shopify store. In this case, I'm going to say our average cost per purchase is $50. Next thing here is you're going to notice there is a little how to wiki on what signal density even is. In short, signal density is the concept that the more signals we give Google in a consolidated effort, the more Google is going to learn from those signals, avoid really bad keywords and focus your spend on the high highest performing searches, highest performing keywords, while Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Snapchat ads, all of the big video platforms are demand driving platforms. Google is a demand capture platform. So what we actually need to focus on here is making sure that Google knows for sure who our most relevant audience is, what keywords we should be bidding on, and when we should be bidding on those. In old school Google ad setups, you'd be able to give all this information to Google up front. You would give it audiences, you would put massive amounts of exclusions in place, and you would constantly add new exclusions as you want along. In new school Google, you need to feed the algorithm as much information as possible, consolidate your learnings and allow it to work for you. So if you haven't updated your strategy in two or three, four or five years, this is something you need to start to do. There are basically three main benefits of having high signal density in a Google ads account. First, the consolidation allows Google ads to optimize faster. Second, it helps the algorithm find the right customers. And third, over time, it helps you achieve a lower cost per purchase, or in many cases, a higher return on ad spend. Contrary to this, when you have too many many fragmented campaigns all broken out by little product lines or little differences or nuances or signals, you wind up in a state where you drive one or two conversions a week on dozens of broken out campaigns, ultimately never allowing Google to get ahead of the curve, never allowing the algorithm to actually figure out what it should be bidding on. And in many cases, taking months and months and months, oftentimes leading to you pausing campaigns. So to actually determine how high signal density is, we're going to be using a very simple rule of thumb. This is the 25 conversion rule of thumb. Basically, if Google has 25 conversions over the course of a seven day period, we are going to consider that to the tune of high signal density. We ideally want every single campaign that we're running to have 25 conversions over a seven day period. Don't get too concerned. If you can't achieve that, I'm going to break down everything in terms of structure that you need. And by the way, this calculator, everything I'm going through here is down in the description. You can get it completely for free. Now we have the recommended campaign structure. I have personally put all the rules in place to determine what the structure is. This is not some AI figuring it out for us. We have now, based on our average daily budget of $500, a monthly budget of $15,200 based on a 30.5 average monthly days per week. Our cost per purchase is 50. This means we're going to drive 10 daily purchases or 70 weekly purchases. So we have a note here, your budget can support 70 purchases per week, which meets Google's recommended threshold of 25 weekly conversions. Now I have here our recommended campaign structure. In this case, we are recommending A, a branded search campaign. This is a non-negotiable. Everyone should have a branded search campaign in place, even if you're 
you're a really, really small brand, just make your budget really, really small. So we have a branded search campaign. This is targeting for users who are searching for your brand name at an impression share setting. Next, we have two performance max campaigns. In this case, where we have 70 weekly purchases, we're gonna be setting up a best sellers performance max campaign, and we're gonna be setting up a remaining products performance max campaign. Both of these are gonna to run to the same target return on ad spend. And in this case, we're driving 80% of our budget to the best sellers campaign and the remaining 20% to the remaining products or catch all campaign. Moving down just a little bit further, we have a nice way to just visualize where our budget's going and then where we need to be in regards to the signal density threshold level. In this case, we could see very clearly our budget allocation is 80% best sellers and then 20% for the performance max other or catch all products. Now you might be asking, okay, I don't have $500 a day. I have a hundred dollars a day. What should I do? In the case of you having just a hundred dollars a day, first off, go up to the top here, drop in a hundred dollars per day. And everything here is going to change. All we are focused on is one single performance max campaign with all products. Keep in mind, this is not law. You could change this around. If you know that one or two of your products drive 90% of your sales, then instead of running all products here, just focus on your best sellers. That is very critical. So let's go on the other end. If you have a thousand dollars to spend a day, you're spending $30,000 per month. You're driving 140 weekly purchases. You're going to see a lot of of options now. These are not exactly how you go and set things up. This is the core of how you can set things up, how expansive you can get. This is one of the best ways when you push in your numbers at the top to determine if you have too many campaigns active. So this is a maximum tool, not a minimum tool. And you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six possible campaigns that we could be running here. We still have our branded search campaign. We have a performance max best sellers and we have a performance max remaining products or catch all, whatever you want to call it. And then down here, we've introduced our very first non-branded search campaign campaign. After this non-branded search campaign, we have additional campaign two, additional campaign three. The purpose of me just putting in here additional campaign two, additional campaign three is because I don't know your business. And if you want your business to be professionally managed, professionally looked at, that's going to be much different than just taking a cookie cutter answer here. If you do want your business professionally managed, go to the moonlighters.com slash apply to see if we're fit to work together. In this case, we now have a possible breakdown of six different campaigns, which is going to give us more freedom in what we can target, what we can do, what signals we want to basically give it, what products we actually want to target. We are always keeping our core. If you're a non-brand search heavy brand is adding the non-brand search campaign after you've had the performance max and the branded search campaign. Keep in mind, as you're playing with this, you ultimately want to be able to flex around those budgets, see what your business could look like with different average order values, with different costs for purchases. And if you were to actually increase your expenditure per day, the core concept here is you don't want to have a broken out account with 20 different campaigns, all targeting different things and never allowing Google to learn. This is a different game than it was in 2020. 2025 is five years later than the last time we saw a significant algorithm change. And we need to make sure that we are putting ourselves in a position that ultimately allows the algorithm, the AI to learn faster than ever. If you're thinking about setting up your Google ads campaigns in a more complex structure, that is great. You probably also are interested in a Facebook ads campaign structure too. So click the video right here where I break down my exact most updated Facebook ad structure for the new 2025 algorithm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one.